Welcome back to Rock and Food. Today I'm probably the most excited I've been throughout the whole series. I've got Mr. Glenn Shorrick inside. He is an Australian rock and roll legend. He sold over 35 million albums with the Little River Band. I'm at his favourite restaurant, Chiswick, in Paddington in Sydney. I've got the lamb on, I've got the salad fresh. Please come and join me inside. I'm more excited than I ever have been. Let's go. Vegas Hilton I know it's hard to hear It's just the echo on the line Yes, that's right, I'm calling from Fantastic Where's this meat from? Uh, that's all from uh, Mad Rats uh, farm which has in New South Wales This is cheesy on the plate, this is our main signature dish Signature dish Yeah, uh, that's his favourite That's his favourite Ah, uh, here he is, Mr. Shari. <laughs> Mark, how you doing? Good, good. What are we, what are we reading? Oh, just a little. Uh, that's what we're reading. <laughs> well, at least we know we've sold one copy. Well, you know, my memory's so bad. I've got to, <laughs> I've got you, to uh, you've got, you've freshen got to look, it up every now and then. You've got to look up what you did in 1978. In, in, in last week as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Now I've spoken to Francois, the new French chef here at Chiswick's, and he's got something special for you that I've had prepared. I know it's your favourite, I know you love the lamb, here it comes. He's look great, at, he's a look, great chef. Look at this. There it is. That'll be the bread. Fantastic. Enjoy. Nice to see you. Thank see you. you so much. Nice and juicy, as we like it. This bit around the edge is good. Okay, so now we're going to try it. Good. Curiosity killed the cat. I'm telling you, I know where it's at. Love is everywhere to be found. Open your eyes and look around. I come from a pretty well, basic working class English migrant family and two, two veg and meat and two veg has been my staple diet do you think when I grew this, up. Do you think that this harks back to that? Yeah. So that harks back to the childhood? Yeah, the roast lamb for Sunday. And who would have made that in the family back then? Mum. Is this in Adelaide? Yeah, in, in, just out, uh, in Elizabeth. It was a migrant town. Barnsley grew up there. Yeah, right. Okay. I grew up there. Okay, fantastic. Did you know him back then? No. No. Well, there's nine years yeah, okay. difference in our age. Got it. So you came to Adelaide young? I was ten years of age when we came to Adelaide and I left at about 19. Right. So all my teenage years basically were spent at home. But by that stage I was, in, I was getting into music and getting out and about with my little red sports car. I was, you know, I was uh, the lead singer of a popular band in Adelaide. Was it much of a scene in those days? Oh yeah. Yeah. And we were, we were right in the middle of it. Yeah, right. And what, what was the what was the name of that that first band? The Twilights. Okay. We began as a three-piece vocal group and then it expanded into the recording band that everybody knows. We became famous, we won the Hoadley Battle of the Sounds, blah blah blah. Needle in a Haystack number one record and you know we had a we had a good six, seven years together. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack, well, I say, a needle in a haystack. Hey, hey. But in the meantime we had six months in England mm -hmm. when we did win the Hoadley's National Battle of the Sounds as it was in those days. Were you flying so, over or, shi or shipping? Shipping, yeah. We played on the ship. Yeah. How long did it take? Six weeks. Wow. Wow. Through the Suez Canal. Yeah. It was great, you know, I was in my early 20s. Tell me more about the time when you arrived into London. I went back to England again yep. on another ship with Brian Cadd mm -hmm. and our band Axiom. We all moved into a house together in South London in 1970, 71. Who was in that band? Brian, myself, Don Moody, his co-writer, mm -hmm. 
uh, Doug Lavery, uh, Chris Stockley. That was about it. All in the one house? Yeah, with wives and girlfriends. And I had about four or five years uh, hanging around the English scene. Okay. Uh, ended up with Cliff Richard as a backup singer. Interesting. For um, a few months, a few weeks. And by that stage, I'd already decided to come back to Australia. And then I get a call from Wheatley, uh, Glenn, you know, who I knew from the Master's Apprentices, mm -hmm. and now he's in the management, mm -hmm. New Seekers and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've got uh, B. Birtles here and Graham Goble. They want to talk to you about a new project. How did they hear about you? How, do, how did they know about you? Hey, I'm Glenn Shorrock. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you were in England? Yeah. They were in Melbourne? No, no, they were all in England as oh, well. Oh, they were all in England. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. No, they were in England. The remnants in Mississippi. Yep, yep. And um, so we had a meeting and sang some songs together. What was the first song? Do you remember the first thing? You... It's a Long Way There. Fantastic. Which is featured on my latest album. Yeah, fantastic. This is my latest album called Glenn Shorrock Sings, Sings Little River Band. Go figure. Go figure. Have a listen. It's me now. It's a long way to where I'm going. It's a long way there. It's a long way to where I'm going. So we said, okay, we'll meet back in Melbourne in the early 75. And that's what I did. I, I came back by myself on an Air India flight, um, crashed at a few people's houses for a while. How yeah. old were you then? How old was I then? Uh, 30. Yep, early 30s. Early, very early 30s. Yep. Uh, I ended up uh, sleeping on the floor next door to Jim Keyes' house in Carlton, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Glenn Wheatley was sleeping in Jim Keyes' house as well. And um, we gradually put Little River Band together. Got on Countdown and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Do you remember those days? Yeah, of course. Are you always in confusion? Surrounded by illusion. Sort it out. You make out. Seem to make a good beginning. Someone else ends up winning. Don't see fair. Don't you care. Wheatley got us a, a worldwide contract with Capitol Records and our first tour we left Australia in 76 and did a tour of Germany mm -hmm. uh, opening up for the Hollies and then we got on a plane and arrived in Washington DC in about 1976 and drove into Virginia and played our first gig uh, with the average white band. That's awesome, mate. We got a standing ovation. Fantastic. We opened for the Doobies on the wow. back of a truck at a uh, wow. open air festival. After a couple of tours and a, a few top ten hits in America, uh, my accountant, I, I, I have an accountant, I, I, could, I had nothing to count before, yeah, yeah. but now I did something to have. He said, you got to buy a, a car a house and a, and a boat, and I did in one year. So L.O.B. really was known as one of the best harmony bands in the world. I mean, really, next to the Eagles is quite an amazing achievement. Yeah, we worked with them uh, quite a bit, off and on. <clears throat> really big shows. Yeah. Arenas. Arenas, yeah. That, and Fleetwood Mac and wow. people like that. You know, with multi-star bills. Mm, mm, mm. But the Eagles, we did the or the Yale Bowl, I think, with them. Uh, the Giants in Giants, what's New it called, York. Arena in New York. Yep. That was 65,000 people. Wow. And Glenn Fry and I got on very well, being two Glens, being the, being the two sort of front men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we ended up bringing um, Glenn out to be Little River Band's guest for the Expo 88 in Brisbane, and that was that was really good fun with him. 
he brought out a couple of horn players and he did his um, uh, The Heat Is On and those mm -hmm. sort of songs, his solo stuff. And then joined LRB and we did uh, Take It Easy and another Tequila Sunrise and mm. it was just, just just really lovely music and he was quoted as saying, you know, the Little River Band could be one of the greatest harmony singing bands in the world. We were third on the bill, there was Fleetwood Mac and then REO Speedwagon and LRB or whatever. And Billy Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Billy Thorpe was having a go as well in, in Dallas. He had a minor hit. The Fleetwoods were huge. Yeah. And they were transported everywhere. This is all the big arena shows, yeah? Outdoor stuff. And they were transported everywhere from the dressing room to the stage by golf buggies. Yeah, yeah. One in each. Yeah. And they went past. And the roadies were saying, Clear, 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 clear the way the fleet was coming. Yeah. And I go, what? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Your voice at 75 is sounding unbelievable. That's, I'm just older and it's Wise. got much more character. Yeah. Wiser, I don't know about. <laughs> um, and the album is called Glenn Shark Sings Little River Band, yeah, which I think will make people think, well, hang on, wasn't he in Little River Band? What an incredible career. I haven't had many disappointments in my life, mm. and, apart from meeting you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for another episode. Look, Glenn, I wanted to thank you for your time, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on Rock and Food. You're an absolute gentleman, you're a legend, and it's been an honor to do this with you. It's been an honor to do this album with you, mm. and it's been an honor to have lunch with you on Valentine's Day of all. Absolutely. There might be a message there. Give us a kiss. <laughs> Taxi! <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> Taxi, he's leaving. Bye. Now, what's left? God, he's eating all of it. Bye. <laughs>